Hello, welcome to White Davy Gardening and Worm Farm. My apologies, my laptop decided not to load, so here I am trying to do it on my phone for the first time, so <laughs> I'm not very good at that as it's the first time I'm doing it this way. I'm hoping I'll get to see comments. So far, I'm not okay. There is the comment. Hi, CC. How are you? Yes. Yeah, so today we are going to be discussing how to the best way that you can actually store your seeds, and we're going to go into detail with not just how to store the seeds but more detail on what to look for when you're going to be storing seeds okay I'm doing well CC I'm doing well good to know you're doing well also so is my feed coming through properly Let me know, not that there is much that I can do about it at the moment, but if not, well, I'm hoping it's going well. <laughs> okay, so most of us gardeners who are growing our garden, we like to collect the seeds. Rodney Parker. Okay, hi Rodney, how are you? And I I think I will need my glasses for this one because the phone is so small. Yes, I'm doing well. Okay, yes, yeah, so we like to collect our seeds and save them for the next growing season. Now, if you're going to be doing that, then we need to consider a few things before we actually start collecting seeds and saving them. So the first thing that you will need to keep in mind is your end goal. Hi, Han White. How are you, dear? Yes, yeah, so what you need to keep in mind is your end goal. So for each type of seed that you plan to harvest, is your goal just to have seeds to grow the following year or is it that you want fruits and vegetable seeds that are similar to what you harvested this season. So for example, say you harvest some tomatoes and the tomatoes were juicy and they taste really nice and so forth. Is that the reason why you're collecting that seed? Because you like the taste and you like the look of the seeds, the look of the tomato. So you're collecting that seed. So ensure that you have the same type of harvest next year or Maybe you had a robust plant and the plant did really well produce a lot of tomatoes or whatever the case may be. Or maybe you have your leafy vegetables that did really well and so you want to replicate that the following year. So the reason you are harvesting seeds that you want to keep in mind because that is going to determine how you go about harvesting your seeds. Okay, so um, whatever you guys are typing, I will see it, but it does not stay on the screen. As I mentioned before, that my laptop decided not to load. So I will see it for a brief moment. So I don't know how to use the phone to scroll back to whatever it is that you're seeing. So I'll try to reply to you guys as quickly as possible so that... I don't miss your comment and for those who are joining the live that I don't miss out and forget to say hi to you okay so right so those are things that you need to keep in mind now a good practice is to choose seeds from the most vigorous plant that you have so if you have a lot of tomato plants or a lot of pepper plants you want to look for the most vigorous plant the one that looks the best the one that is producing the most fruits and the one that is producing healthy fruits so you'll also need to keep in mind the size of the fruit or the vegetable the taste of it 
when you decide to harvest seeds because what you want is to replicate what you had before so if you have plants that looks wishy-washy for lack of a better word or not healthy then you don't want to harvest seeds from those so if you know that you have plants and the plants had disease some plants some diseases will affect down to the very seed that is produced there are some plant diseases that will affect the seeds so if you know what type of plant disease you've encountered then you might want to do research on it and to see whether or not that type of disease will affect the seeds and then if not you can go ahead and harvest your seeds but in general you want to look for plants that are very healthy now if you want fruits and vegetables to maintain the proper flavor so for example you have a scotch bonnet like the jamaican scotch bonnet it has a distinct flavor and it is very spicy so if that is what you're going for you want to maintain that authentic flavor that authentic shape of the fruit and things like that then consider whether or not whatever you are growing cross pollinated with other plants other varieties of the same type of plant because that may have an effect on your produce the following year so for example that scotch bonnet that i just mentioned if you had sweet peppers growing beside it they will cross pollinate and as they cross pollinate the shape of the scotch bonnet might not be the same as it was previously the taste of it might not be as it was before so you need to keep cross pollination in mind when you are going to harvest seeds for growing the following year keep in mind sometimes you might love the outcome of what happens when plants cross pollinate so if that is the case where they cross pollinate and you actually love that new variety that you have then go ahead and collect those seeds but if you want to maintain an authentic quality then keep cross pollination in mind now one thing that you can do to ensure that your plants of similar type but different variety does not cross pollinate is to ensure that you plant them in separate locations so that they won't get the chance or it will drastically reduce the chances of them cross pollinating so things like peppers and tomatoes and those those will cross pollinate quite easily it does not take much for them to cross pollinate so for each variety that you want to grow make sure you maintain the space the appropriate spacing so that cross pollination does not take place okay so for seeds to produce a harvest of similar quality to the ones you've just harvested one thing that you have to keep in mind is the type of seed that it is so whether it is heirloom hybrid or it is open pollinators because if it is hybrid you don't want to save the seeds from it because for hybrid seeds they have been directly manipulated by mankind to produce a specific variety but each time you harvest seeds from that and you plant it you will not get the same thing that you just harvested it's going to be different so if it is hybrid seeds then you don't want to harvest those seeds and grow them that is if you're going for an authentic product if you don't mind whether or not it is exactly the same as it was before then you can harvest your hybrid seeds yes yeah, so another thing that you want to keep in mind is to make sure that the seeds let's see and white says i'm rather good or are you okay right that are you hi healthy LP says, oh my God, where have I been? You've reached a thousand. These things don't even stay on the screen long enough for you to see what's there. Let's see. No, I don't want to hide it. Comments. Why would I hide it? 
Okay, there we go. I think I figured it out. Good. Hi, <laughs> Viola, how are you? <laughs> Welcome to the live, everyone. Yes, um, I don't know. And the funny thing is when I reached the thousand, I knew I was close, but I wasn't sure exactly how close I was because you might have noticed that for a few days, I think from Wednesday of last week, I wasn't uploading any videos until, what, yesterday or the day before? I think yesterday, yes. I wasn't uploading any videos because I got locked out of my account. <laughs> I wasn't able to access anything so I didn't even know yes but it's good yes I've reached my hours from May of this year I'm way past the required hours so it's all good thanks let's see Oh, yeah. You're so modest. You haven't even said anything. You've done great work. Heck yeah. Okay, thank you, my dear. I'm going to, I'm trying to figure out what to do to celebrate. I want to give gifts, but I'm not really sure what type of gifts to do. So, until I get that figured out, I won't be celebrating just yet. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, I won't be celebrating just yet. But thanks everyone for the support that got me here. Let's see. And White says, yes, she has reached months, months ago. Okay. Yes, I got locked up, my dear. Changed my password and then try to log into my other device and YouTube, not YouTube, G Google says, um, you just changed your password a few minutes ago. And I'm like, yes, that is why I'm trying to log in now because I changed the password, but I don't know there was some form of glitch there and I was locked out for a while, but anyway, I managed to get it, to get it started out. So I'm happy about that because I was really missing you guys. <laughs> see uh, uh, Rodney says thank you you are a wealth of valuable information okay I'm glad I can provide information that you guys can benefit from and I've also been benefiting gaining a lot of information from you guys as well so that makes it worthwhile <laughs> yes I know healthy it can be very frustrating <laughs> Yes, and especially if you run a business and rely on it for your business, then, you know, you're in serious trouble. <laughs> LP says, yes, she is. Okay, thank you, my dear. Right, so, let's see now. We were talking about seeds. Yes, yeah, so we said that you want to make sure that your seeds are viable for the next growing season. So you want to make sure that the seeds that you harvest, that you actually dry them properly. Because if you don't dry your seeds properly, you can have a lot of problems arising from that. So to dry your seeds, you want to spread them out as thinly as you possibly can so that it will have the proper airflow that will actually encourage the seeds to dry and when you do that it will prevent your seeds from molding up because once it molds up then naturally it's not going to be growing again and you want to prevent the seeds from being wet for too long because that will encourage it to germinate quite early and then the whole purpose of saving it would be defeated so if you do this then it will actually help your seeds to dry quickly Let's see if I miss any comments. Let's see. 
little pieces. So it doesn't appear you have set up the monetization on your end or I would see the monetization button in my chat box. Oh, okay, I didn't know you get um you would be able to see something like that. But anyway, yes, I haven't applied for the monetization yet because you know how people are, they might watch a video on your channel and they love that video and so they subscribe to you but then they find that the next couple of videos that they watch they don't really like it so they might choose to unsubscribe so once i reached the thousand i decided i'm going to just let it go somewhat over the thousand before i apply just in case a few decide to unsubscribe so that is why i haven't applied for it just yet Let's see, LP says, do you know if you can harvest seed eggs that are dry and dead before the frost? Because of the frost? Um, that's an interesting question and it is one that I wanted to find the answer to. But unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to wait and see so i think i didn't get the chance because that's an experiment that i wanted to do but it gets so cold outside and you know me i'm afraid of the cold so <laughs> i didn't go out and harvest the seeds after the frost so i guess next year i'll be doing that experiment but i don't know the answer to that question hopefully if someone else on the live knows the answer then they might be able to answer it for you yes and if you find out the answer it would be nice if you would share it with us <laughs> i'd like to really like to know the answer because sometimes you have seeds that you want to harvest but time doesn't you know what um on the principle that you can actually store seeds in your freezer chances are that the seeds would still be viable if they experience the frost what do you think? Because, I mean, you can store seeds in your freezer, you can store them in your fridge. And you can do that, then they should be able to survive the frost, if it, if it is the frost that killed them. I don't, um, the only thing is that, well, you said dried and dead because of the frost. So, if it got dried first, then chances are the seeds should be okay. Yes, they should be okay. But it would be nice to experiment with it and find out though. <laughs> um, yes, you can harvest green mature. As long as the seed is mature, you can harvest it. Yes, yeah, so that's because the all that the seed needs to grow. It, needs to be mature and then it has the right conditions once the conditions are met then they'll be able to grow so you can actually harvest them green and allow them to dry as long as the seed is mature that's all that matters let's see oh hi makia hey no pieces ah that's a good point i agree with you the cold shouldn't be the issue but i'm wondering about whether or not they are mature And then that they are mature before the frost kill them. I still saw them. Okay, yes, um, that is the question, right? Whether or not they were mature before. So I did have some seeds that I wanted to collect and I wasn't sure if they are mature, some of my lettuce seeds. And I'm not sure if they are mature and the frost came. So what I did is I harvest them and I make sure that I keep them to themselves and I mark, keep them marked so that I know that, okay, these are the seeds that I'm not sure if they are mature and then I'm going to be sorting them out and see if they will grow. But what I'm going to be doing is when I sort them out and allow them to dry, I'm going to plant a few of them indoors and just see what happens. If they germinate, then good. If not, then I'll just toss the rest. But it's not so easy to know. For some seeds, it's not easy to know if they were mature before the frost. 
Okay, thank you, my dear uh, Makia. Hey, you said very good live. Okay. What about tomato or kiwano seeds? How do you handle those seeds that require fermentation? Well, um, I don't know what kiwano is. I've never heard of it. But for your tomato seeds, what I really do with my tomato seeds, after I harvest them, I actually wash the seeds. Sometimes I'll just wash the seeds to get rid of all of that little fuzzy that is on the seeds. And then I'll spread them out to dry them. Or I'll just take the seeds out with all of the middle of the tomato and just spread it out on, what's the paper called? Paper towel and just let it stay there and dry. I don't really do anything else to them apart from that. But that's a good question. Let's see, LP says, Romney, you just reminded me I have some in a cup with water fermenting. Oh my goodness, I forgot again. Oh, um, you know, I've never really fermented seeds as it were um, for my tomato seeds I just like I said I just take them out of the tomatoes and either wash them off and the moment I put them in the water to wash them off I just wash them off run it through the strainer and put them to dry or I just have take them out of the fruit and put them on the paper towel I haven't really gone through the process of fermenting them so what's the benefit of fermenting them? Because it's actually the first time I'm hearing about fermenting the tomato seeds. So what's the benefit of that? Never too old to learn, eh? That's why I like doing lives. Okay, so... As you may know, the thicker the seeds, the harder it takes or the longer it takes for them to dry. Right, so these ones especially, you want to make sure that you have them spread thin so that they will dry quickly. And although these seeds, especially the thicker ones, tend to look dry on the outside, it may take quite a while for them to be dry on the inside. So you want to make sure that you allow sufficient time for these seeds to really dry. Now, especially for these thicker seeds, you might want to dry them on screen as opposed to on solid surfaces because if you're drying them on screen, it is going to allow air to flow from the bottom and from the top. So the seeds are being dried all around as opposed to the hair just passing over the surface of the seeds. So doing that, drying on, on screens will help your tomatoes. Um, will help your seeds to dry, sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying tomatoes. LP says, I've seen people scrape the seed out of the fruit, put them in a container with couple inches or so of water then let them sit a week drain off the scum while the seeds will be at the bottom okay yes that's a nice way to do it but i'm always um a bit concerned about having the seeds in water for any extended period of time because i don't really want to see the seeds starting to grow but i guess if they're doing it that way it works Yes, but like you help me, if I do that method, I know I'm going to forget. <laughs> Without a doubt, I will forget unless, of course, I put it on my to-do list. <laughs> Let's see. Radney says, ha ha, help me. I'm not sure of benefit, honestly, but I thought it took that slimy film off the seeds. Okay. And White says, I don't even wash my tomato seeds. I just put them to dry and sow them when the time when it's time to. Oh, okay. LP says, rinse them off, maybe in a strainer, then let dry. Maybe 
on wax paper. The idea is that the fermenting gets rid of the gel covering the seeds, okay. LP says, I've seen you and hand use that method and obviously it works. Seems like less work. <laughs> and Mike says yes. Yes, it's definitely less work and I'm all for less work because I have more work than I can manage. <laughs> So if it is less work, I'm all, I'm, I'm, I'm all in. <laughs> yes. So another thing that you can do if you have seeds, especially the thicker ones that take long to dry, is to run a fan. So keep a fan running in the room where you're drying your seeds, if you're drying them indoors. But you don't want to have the fan directly on the seeds because that might depending on the weight of your seeds, might blow your seeds away. So you just want to have that here circulating in the room where the seeds are. Hi, growing my own, how are you? Yes, yeah, so you can have a fan circulating or the next thing that you can do is to stir the seeds so that all the various sides of the seeds are getting air and that will help them to dry quicker okay so another thing though that is very important to keep in mind where seeds are concerned they're very sensitive to heat and so you do not want to use any form of heat apart from the heat provided by the sun to dry your seeds because that can kill them Let's see. LP says, when my bird flies around, there goes any seeds I have dried, so I have to cover or move them. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. LP says, do you know how to save squashed seeds? I think I don't. <laughs> um, for squash seeds, it's the same thing I do like I would for my tomato seeds, I take them out and try to separate them from the belly of the squash and then just put them in paper, whether it is parchment paper or it is uh, paper towel, doesn't matter which. Yes, that's all I do and just allow them to stay there and dry. They take a really, really long time to dry. So I just let them stay and dry. Another thing too is seeds of different variety needs to be kept separated so you don't want to put your seeds where by accident they can get mixed up with other seeds especially if the seeds are similar in appearance because then when you're planting you might end up with 10 plants of one 10 types of one plant when you only wanted five and so forth or you might not know what it is that you're planting so you want to keep your seeds separated from each other with no chances of them getting mixed up um, and why it says she washes those seeds before she dries them i don't really wash mine to be honest i just put them to dry I know it has that little film on it and then when they're dry, those little film, if you rub them, they just fall off. But washing them, I guess, would be the easiest method to get that off. But I'm not really concerned about that little film that is on the squashed seeds. Yeah, so like on White says, you can wash them or you can use my method of just simply separating it from the pumpkin belly and putting it to dry. Okay, so another thing when you are saving seeds, and this step is a very important one to do the moment that you harvest the seeds, is right away when you put those seeds to dry, you want to label them 
right away. You don't want to wait because you know how it is. Unless you have an exceptional memory, you can easily forget what seeds they are. So, for example, you might say, okay, I can look at the seeds and tell it's a tomato. I can look at that one and say it's a pepper and I can tell that that is a pumpkin seeds or that is a squash seed. But sometimes you might have a wide variety of the same type of plant or type of seed. So you might have Roma tomato, beefsteak tomato, San Marzano tomato. They all look the same. But then you put them all to dry in the same location but you did not label them so you don't know which is which and if you're someone like me who is specific on planting some time more of a particular type of tomato than the other then you're going to want to know what type of seed it is because then you don't want to be planting San Mar a lot of San Marzano when you intended to plant a lot of beef steak so keeping them labeled is a pretty good harvest them just label them and set them aside so that you won't get mixed up. Let's see. Um, LP says, oh, okay, thank you both. I saved some squash seeds and they look flat and wrinkled, unlike what I have in the original package. Okay, um, chances are if your seeds, if squash and pumpkin seeds look flat, deflated and wrinkled, there's a high probability that they were not mature. Because when they're mature, they tend to be, as you can see from the seeds that you started out with. So chances are they may not be mature enough. Yes, but you might want to keep them just in case to see if they are Oh, LP says, great advice, White Davy. I have set seeds aside with the intent to get right to them, but by the time I do, I've forgotten exactly what they are. Yes, um, I've had that issue too quite a few times. And sometimes you tell yourself, you're just definitely going to know that this is what it is. And then I think one of the biggest things that catch me though is that I might harvest this particular seed now and because it is just the one set type of seed that I harvest so I put it in that location but then later on I might go and harvest something with a similar looking seed and just put it down and because it is that one you say okay I know that it is that one but then when you actually have all the seeds there now and you go back you're like oh my goodness which one was which again <laughs> so I try to label them as quickly as possible so that I don't make that mistake. I don't always succeed though in um, labeling them right away, but I try to stay on top of it. <laughs> Let's see. LP says, they didn't look that way before I let them dry. I'm going to try to germinate one just to see. Okay, good. Um, Gwen my home says, I am bad at labeling things, but this year I tried to label everything. Okay, good. That's a start. <laughs> LP says, I can at least see, I can at least say when I harvested my pepper seeds, I did write the names and dates on the different paper towels, knowing I'd mess them up if I didn't. Good job. Um, help you ask can go in my own how she did with the labeling this year, I guess. <laughs> okay, let's see where was I. Okay, yes, yeah, so if you're unsure that the seeds that you have harvested is fully dry, then one of the things that you can do to ensure that they do not get moldy or they do not germinate early is to store them in paper bags or in paper envelopes because then there is some amount of air that can pass through the paper and that will help them to dry and then you can put them into storage now when you are storing your seeds you want to ensure that you have them in a clean environment because you don't want them to develop 
any form of bacteria or plant disease so you want to make sure the environment is clean you want it to be cool dry and away from light now seeds should be stored in airtight container only if you're going to be storing it in a freezer or in the fridge and the reason you would put it in an airtight container in your freezer or fridge is because it would keep moisture out you want to avoid storing your seeds in things like plastic bags or airtight plastic containers because if there is any trace of moisture in them then your seeds are going to be germinating early or they're going to get moldy so you don't want to store them in airtight plastic containers or airtight or in plastic bags and sometimes the container the plastic container or the plastic bag might be dry but if your seeds are not absolutely dry they could reach the moisture that is in the seed is actually going to encourage that seed to germinate because there's no no air in that bag or to go moldy because there's no air in that bag to help to dry that seed and the moisture is trapped inside that plastic so you don't want to store your seeds glass bottles work very well for storing seeds to answer your question and see yes okay so straining glass bottle bottles work okay what seeds am i saving this year i don't have a lot of seeds saving this year uh, i didn't i don't have any carrot seeds that i'm saving because you know plant is a by um carrot is biennial so I have enough that I that I harvested from 2020. So I'm gonna keep those. I'm going to be keeping them for three years, so I don't have to save those. But I have kalalu, um, lots of kalalu seeds. I have okra seeds. I have mint. Um, what's that thing? Italian basil. I have pumpkin and lettuce, um, various types of tomatoes, and I have scotch bonnet. And well, the scotch bonnet is not from <laughs> it's not from my trees because they didn't do well enough you know, for me to harvest the seeds. But I have some scotch bonnet seeds that I'm saving, and I have. Um, mm -hmm joy <laughs> yes so those are the seeds that um that i am saving at the moment yes this year i didn't get as well i don't usually save a lot of seed each each year anyway but i was hoping to have some chinese cabbage seeds saved but that didn't work out unfortunately yeah and i wanted some romaine lettuce um i harvested some seeds but when I was going through them this week and looking at them, they didn't look as if they were fully mature because it started to get cold outside before the seeds started showing any sign of being ready to harvest. But hopefully next year. So I'm going to be starting for those things like those things that take long to produce their seeds. Now I'm going to be starting them early as early as I can in the growing season so that I'll be able to reap some seeds next year. Let's see. And my chest. Okay, because I'm saving my seeds in them. Okay. Um, Rodney says, are paper bags viable for saving, for storing? seeds yes they are very nice for storing seeds one of the things about them is that if there's any moisture the paper will wick the moisture so when you put it in your paper bag or paper envelope then you can put them in some other container 
but then you want to have them in that paper envelope or whatever paper product you can store them in I don't know I keep on trying to scroll on the laptop forgetting that it is a phone I'm using <laughs> well, let's see um, and says I'm saving peppers only please could you get me some of your colorless seeds please oh sure I've got lots of it and it is the Kautong variety which I like because the leaves are so big thus the name yes so I have quite a quite a bit of those seeds what I would like though is to get my hands on some of those um what is it called Chinese Chinese spinach but it is actually kalalo but it's that red red ones red and green leaves so i'd love to get my hands on some of those seeds but you don't get hammerant seed here to buy you'd have to know someone who can get it for you let's see lp says i've got some red stock amaranth seeds oh nice what seeds would i like to have for next year if I have a wish list um there are some seeds that I know off the bat that I would love to have for next year I don't have a wish list that has been created yet because I still have a few things that I'm working on before I can put my seed list together and then I want to go through and see what seeds I have but then there are some seeds that I definitely know I don't have so like I mentioned, those, um, the red and green leaf amaranth, those I would like. Even the red stalk ones. The red stalk ones are the leaves green because I know there are quite a few varieties of the red stalk or the red leaf ones. So yes, for the red amaranth, I love those. Um, cow peas, I would definitely like to get my hands on some of that too. Uh... I don't know. I'd have to go through and see what it is. <laughs> I don't know yet. I haven't put together a wish list, but those two definitely are on the list of things that I would like to get my hands on. Let's see. Hi, Jaspreet. <laughs> How are you, dear? Okay, you're a newcomer. Welcome, my dear. Yes, and another good pra practice where seeds storage is concerned is to make sure that you label the seeds. That not label, but that you date the seeds that you have harvested because it's easy to forget when you harvest seeds, especially if you harvest your seeds on an annual basis. And so, for example, you harvest some amaranth last year and you harvest some this year. If, excuse me, if you don't date them, then you're not going to know which one you harvested when. And so you won't get to use the older set of seeds first and ensure that the seeds that remain are viable. So dating your seeds as soon as you can is also a very good practice let's see um good my home says as you mentioned copies did you get your seeds yet no i haven't gotten them yet i'm still here waiting <laughs> To see what's going on but I guess in a few days or so they might show up okay let's see this I created a seed list with dates and when they expire okay good yes that's also a good idea too to um, put your expiry date on them that's a pretty good idea. The good thing though is that seeds 
can last between two to five years. So you want to keep that in mind when you are harvesting your seeds. One thing to also consider regarding the fact that seeds can last two to five years is that with each year that passes, the, seeds, the seed lose some of its viability. So even though the seed might be able to last for five years, if you have fresher seeds that you can plant, then you don't want to use the five-year-old seed because depending on the type of seed, because if it is heirloom, then it doesn't really matter much. But then other than that, as it loses its viability, you, the plant is going to germinate, it's going to grow, but it's not going to give you the quality that you would get as opposed to if you had planted a three-year-old seed. So you might choose to plant your seeds or switch out your seeds before they reach the expiry date. Let's see. Now piece of the red stalk I have are more red than anything. The leaves have some green to them, but they but they are like a dark reddish green. Okay, good. Yes, I'd love some of that. Now pieces. Oh, that's nice, hand. And these guys are saying greetings to Jaspreet. And says, I'm only green, keeping them for three years. Okay, good. Um, do Kalalu and Amaranth seeds survive frost? I think they do. Um, but I am not sure if all varieties do. And the reason I say I think they do is because there are some varieties that grow wild here. And every year they're in my garden. And I did not plant any of them in the location where they're growing. So some of them will survive frost and survive the freezing. But I don't necessarily know if it is all varieties because the ones that tend to, that I see growing here is the wild type. And those ones I don't really eat because they tend to have fuzzy fuzzy little things on them so they are not as harsh or coarse as a pumpkin leaf but you kind of get the idea some it's kind of a bit coarse has these fuzzy things on them but those come back every year so now that i didn't harvest mine very early and a lot of the seeds fell in my raised beds so i'm going to be seeing if they decide to grow next year Oh, then I will be able to give a definite answer where that is concerned. But yes, um, I don't really know if all varieties will be able to overwinter. Let's see. Yes, and another thing to that you can keep in mind regarding saving seeds is that you don't necessarily want to save close to the amount of seeds that you intend to grow for the following year. And the reason you don't want to grow, to save just a few more seeds than what you intend to grow is that Sometimes you sow your seeds and for whatever the case may be, they decide not to germinate or if they germinate, the seedling may suffer some form of calamity. So if having more seeds than you actually intend to grow is a very good idea because then if something happens to the first set or the second set, then you have enough where you can keep retrying. Now, when you're using paper towel to store, to dry your seeds, it has its advantage and it has its disadvantage. So the advantage of using paper towel to let your seeds dry is that paper towel will absorb a lot of the moisture 
But the disadvantage is that the seeds tend to stick to the paper towel and it can be a bit tricky to get them off. Sometimes you get them off with a piece of the paper towel attached to it. And the opposite is true when it comes to using parchment paper. They don't absorb the moisture that is in the seeds or on the seeds, but then it is easy to get them up off the parchment paper once the seeds are dry. <laughs> so pretty much you have to figure out which of them you would rather use for drying your seeds. Let's see. Healthy says put them in some small Ziploc bags and write on the bags. Okay, and wife says she just sewed them with with the paper on them. Yes, okay. I just sewed them with the paper towel, okay. Yes, because it doesn't really do any harm really because the paper towel will add carbon <laughs> to your soil so there's no harm in it right so one of the questions that i was going to ask you guys i guess it doesn't make sense to ask because we already discussed that i was going to ask about um your tomatoes and pumpkin seeds how you go about storing them if you wash them before but we already discussed that so how do you store your seeds? Do you store them in plastic bag, paper bags? Do you store them in plastic containers? How do you go about storing your seeds? So mine, I just allow them to dry mostly on, I dry them on pretty much anything. It doesn't really matter to me. So I dry them on paper towel, I dry them on newspaper, I dry them on pretty much anything I can get my hands on, plates, whatever the case may be, but as they dry, I try to make sure that I keep them labeled so I don't get them mixed up, and then as you know, I love to make my little envelopes out of whatever scrap envelope or scrap papers I have around the home, and then I make my envelopes and store them, but one of the things that I like to do with my seeds is because I'm dating my seeds, I try to keep similar seeds in the same location. So for example, if I have a container with seeds from last year from my Pak Joy, and say I have seeds from this year from, from my Pak Joy, I just use an elastic band and tie the envelopes with all the Pak Joy seeds that I have together. So they are in the same location, but then because they are dated, so I will know which set of seeds is the older one and which is the newer one. And then I try to plant out the older ones so that they don't expire and go to waste. Although nothing goes to waste because my worms will eat them. <laughs> and if the worms don't eat them, then they will become fertilizer in my garden. Let's see. LP says, last year I put some marigold and calendula seed in a small Ziploc. Okay, and what was the result? Um, growing my own says, after they dry, I put them in Ziploc bags. Okay, yes, as long as they are properly dried, then they should be fine in a Ziploc container. The tricky thing though is sometimes knowing when they are fully dry, so... For me, I can have my seeds spread out to dry for months just to be on the safe side, especially for the larger set of seeds. LP says, this here I've made small envelopes with paper and I'm keeping them in there. I've also used a glass jar for mustard greens. Okay. LP says, I didn't collect my amaranth until after the frost. That is why I asked. Okay. Yes. Um, I was a bit late in collecting most of my amaranth seeds this year too. Some of them have actually gone through the frost. But the thing is that the plant didn't look as if it was 
damaged by the frost it was already drying down so yes but they should be fine <laughs> Let's see, LP says, well, I planted several kinds of marigold, then forget who went where, but I do believe they germinated. My calendula germinated and the mustard greens too. Okay, and growing my own says she does that too. Viola says, I do dry on paper plates and store in small plastic jars or white envelopes. Okay. And LP says, thank you, Melanie. Yeah, so there are different ways that we can go about drying our seeds. The important thing is to ensure that we have them dried properly so that they do not spoil on us or germinate on us too early. And then we don't have them to grow the next season. Yes, so I have quite a lot of seeds. I have a lot of um, pak choy. I have a lot of carrot seeds. The carrots that I have are the imperial long. They're long and they're very sweet. So I have lots, when I say lots, <laughs> I probably have hundreds, close to a thousand of them. So if anybody wants any of them, just let me know because it's quite a lot. And for the pak choy, I have quite a lot too. And I have a good amount of the amaranth. So if anyone wants some, you can let me know. I'd be happy to share because I know for a fact that I will not be able to plant off all these seeds before they reach their expiry date because I just don't have the space. So I'd rather share it than allow them to go bad. Let's see. LP says, this year I've collected tomatoes, squash, peppers, tons of marigolds, zinnias, calendula, amaranth, beans. I can't remember what else. <laughs> what type of beans? Yes, I'm going to have to buy quite a bit of the seeds that I want to grow this year. Um, especially beans. My peas didn't do well. My beans, well, neither beans nor peas did well this year because the cutworms got the best of them. <laughs> and for those that didn't get affected by the cutworms, they were severely damaged by other pests or because I keep trying over and over again, every time a set of them get damaged, I plant more seeds. So the last set that I planted, the plants started to look well and everything, but they started producing, but the growing season ended before I got anything out of them. So next year, definitely I'm hoping, especially for my lima bean and my kidney beans, that I will have a nice service. My kidney beans weren't that bad, but for my lima beans, I'm so disappointed because I was really, really looking forward to it. But we'll see what next year brings where that is concerned. <laughs> okay, so let's see. LP says blue lake bush beans. Don't know those. Rattlesnake. Cool beans. Oh, interesting name. <laughs> Triumphal Violetta. Pole beans. Purple pods. Okay. What kind of beans are you looking for? Okay. Yes, I want the um, lima beans and I don't like broad bean. They're too thick. Uh, I don't like broad beans, but I want lima beans and red kidney beans. But I think I'm going to source the red kidney beans from, what are they called, VZ, VZ seeds. Was it VZ that I bought them from? I don't remember. But if wherever I bought them from, I'll just look up back in my email and find. Yes, because when they are selling seeds, they're, they sell lots and lots, large quantities of seeds. and. To grow kidney beans to have any nice harvest, you need to plant a good amount of it. So 
I'm going to be harvesting, um, sourcing the kidney beans from them, but for the lima beans, I can't seem to find anyone that have a good supply of them. It's always just a few beans in a sachet, and then you have to buy lots of sachets. So. Kidney beans are the main things that I want to grow. But I'm going to spend some time in the next, probably December, to go through my seeds and see what I have, what I need. And then I'm going to be trying to plant my garden. I have some crops. You know how it is in your garden. You always have those crops that are must have and then you have those crops that are okay if i have them i'll be excited but whatever yes yeah, so for those must have i already know what those are but then for the things that i would like to grow whether for the first time or not i'm going to have to spend some time and think about it and then put my list of seeds together Okay, so it's been another good discussion, but I'll be leaving you guys pretty soon because I have to go to work. <laughs> yeah, so those are the ways, um, the methods that can be used to store seeds. The most important thing when storing seeds apart from storing it in a clean, cool, dry place apart, away from light, is to consider whether or not the plant had disease and whether the disease will affect the seeds or the type of, the quality of the harvest that you've had. And if that is this type of quality that you would like to have next growing season then that factor is going to determine what plant you save seeds from. Oh, you already put all your seeds together and white. You're so ahead of the game. <laughs> yes, I've got so much to do. There is just, there's just very little time to focus on that for now. So, um, the good thing is that I have the entire winter to get that done because there's just so much on my plate at the moment and after i got all my outside work done and because i was in such a frenzy trying to get all of the outside work done before it got so cold it seemed as if at that point in time i was just full of energy and the moment, the very day that I finished doing the outside work, I'm like, oh my goodness, can somebody give me some of their energy? I'm just, I'm beat. <laughs> and I, I don't know, no matter how I try to regain that momentum, I'm just like, nah, <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> it's not happening for me at all. Let's see. Um, growing my own says I planted the kidney beans from the store, but what I harvested this year, I will plant next year. Okay, I tried to plant the kidney beans from the store and not a single one of them germinated. So I don't know what process there the beans went through, but none of them germinate and I made several attempts. So no, I don't try to buy to plant any of the beans that come directly from the store because I don't know what the story is with them but they don't seem to be germinating which is quite a disappointment because I mean you could get so much seeds at a reasonable price but I think maybe the seeds might also be too old yes because you know how when you put it in your pressure pot it stays there for a while before it's cooked and once your beans take long very long to cook it means that they're really really dry old peas or old beans yes yeah, so i think maybe that's what we that's what we're getting so they won't grow it's nice that you can get them to grow in your region though let's see um, oh uh, Melanie says, congrats on your thousand subscriber. You're very well. Thank you, my dear. <laughs> You're very welcome.
welcome. Uh, yes, thank you. Let's see. And says, I did that last year, Melanie, and they did well. I'll try next year. Okay, see, I'm the unfortunate one where that is concerned then because none of mine germinate and I planted some just directly from the package and then some I put to soak and rather than germinating the ones that I put to soak just split it too they don't yeah so I know that something is definitely wrong either they're too old or something but something is definitely wrong because usually they don't split in two but that's what happens when I soak them in water let's see lp says i just planted some more garlic yesterday oh nice and han white says she planted hers this week i wanted to plant it mine this fall like september early october is when i should have planted mine but unfortunately that didn't work out i didn't get to plant them because i was so busy with the yard cleanup so I'm going to have to plant them next year. So I'm going to just keep them in the fridge for buy a new set and keep them in the fridge for six weeks to two months and then plant them out. Let's see. Rodney says, good night. Thank you again. Okay. Good night, Rodney. And says, mine did well too. And the butter beans. Okay. Okay, so... Thank you guys for your support and hopefully I will see you again on Friday. So take care and stay safe and keep planning ahead for that next growing season. Hopefully next year we'll have even more fun in the garden. Good night.